Hello everyone, welcome to Noth Interactive's introduction to the Unity engine. And in this video, in this course, we're going to understand how this engine works. Okay, so we start by looking at the editor. So we see all the windows available, all the features that we have in here. And later in the other videos, we're going to see feature by feature. Okay, we're going to look at 3D models, okay, simple shapes like cubes and spheres. We're going to understand how to navigate in this scene here. We're going to, to understand how to change color, how to apply transparency, how to use particle effects, lighting, so there are six to seven features that we're going to learn about, but we're going to look one by one very calmly to understand how they work. And then later, work on our own games, our own projects. So if you want, later you can evolve to something that can be published to the stores, like the App Store or the Google Play Store, for example. If you don't own Unity yet, you just have to go to the unity3d.com webpage. Okay, it's a very nice page. You're going to see a few videos playing here, and you're going to see a few features. There are lots of interesting content in here that is nice for you to, to take a look later. But if you just want to download, you have to press this button here, Get Unity Now. And once you click here, you're going to be taken to another page where there are going to be some options. Okay, so we have the personal version, but we also have Plus, Pro, an enterprise, but don't worry, you don't have to pay right now. The personal version is completely free and you can even publish your games to the store. There are a few restrictions that it's important for you to learn more about by clicking in this learn more link, but you just have to click on the download now button and once you are in this page, you just press download installer. So you're going to download a helper file, this Unity Download Assistant. Once we double click it, we're going to open another folder if you are on Mac OS and you just have to open this app file here or if you are on Windows it's just going straight to the installer okay so again we just press the open button and we're going to see a few instructions here for the installation we just press continue there are some terms of service that is important for you to read then you press continue again Let's agree if that's the case. And you're going to see the options here to download Unity. Okay, it's important to have these three first selected. So we need the actual editor, documentation, and standard assets. And if you want to have build support for Android or iOS or any other platform, it is important for you to come here and activate all the things that you want to use. Okay, this is very important. If, if not, if you don't want to install now, that's okay. But later to add support, you'd have to install these extra files in here. Okay, and after you're done with this, you should be able to open the Unity editor. All right, so in the next video, we're going to open the editor, start a new project, and well, start taking a look on the available tools in here. I hope you're excited to start this, and I'll see you soon. Hello there, welcome back. Now that we have Unity open, we have to create a new project so we can start understanding this tool a bit better. To make a new project, we go to the top right and press the new button. And now we have a few settings to adjust here. First of all, we need to set the project name. So let's name this Exploring Unity. The location of this project is going to be in a projects folder that I created under my home folder. And why did I do this? Uh, it's very common for newcomers to any game engine to just drop their projects into documents or desktop or downloads folder. This is not very good. It is better to have a, a folder just for your project so you can easily find them uh, anywhere you want. Okay, so we have Exploring Unity as the project name and the location is going to be Projects. We're going to leave the 3D rendering mode enabled and after that we're going to click Create Project. So after we do this, Unity is going to create a folder with the same name of your project name in your projects folder. Okay, it's going to be there you can access through your operating system, either it is a Mac OS or Windows or Linux, and you can just find the files of your project there. And now the editor has opened. So if this is your first time working with a 3D game engine, it might seem a bit uh, complicated in the beginning, okay, since this is the first time you're looking, but actually it makes pretty much sense, okay? Let's take a look on each of these windows and tabs available here, one by one. So in the top left, you have a hierarchy window. 
Okay, this is going to work more or less like you have in your operating system. So, for example, if you go to your pictures folder, you're going to see several other folders there for uh, events that you went. So, for example, a birthday party, or if you made a trip to a nice beach, or if you went to, to a party in a nightclub, there are going to be several folders. And inside of these folders, you're going to see different files that are going to be your pictures. That's pretty much how a hierarchy is going to work in Unity. Okay, We're going to have a list of files inside this hierarchy, and each of them are going to have their own hierarchy if you want. Okay, And these items that we see here, in this case we have main camera and we have directional light, they are called game objects. Okay, this name is very important, game object. It is the base entity for making a game in Unity. So you're going to have a game object for the camera that is going to render the game for the player. You're going to have a game object for the player. You're going to have a game object for enemies, for uh, explosion effects, for a river, for whatever you can imagine that is going to change how your game is working, either visually or internally. It needs to be in a game object. That's pretty much how it works here. However, there is a problem, not a problem, kind of a characteristic of the hierarchy window. You can't see anything uh, there, okay? Imagine you have a 3D cube, you, you would only see the name cube. So the hierarchy is basically just text, okay? And uh, of course, configuring the hierarchy of the objects, okay? If you have a parent object that contains several children objects, that's pretty much everything you need. But what if you want to see what we have in this hierarchy? Okay. And this is the, the best thing of using a, a game engine, not just any programming language, but a game engine. Unity has a scene window. Okay, So this is kind of the gates for us to see the virtual world we are building. Okay, Notice that we have a plane in here, we can see some grey guides. And the good thing about this is that if you right click in this scene window, notice that your mouse icon turns into an eye and a few uh, buttons. And while you're holding the right mouse button, you can just look anywhere you want. Okay, left, right, top, bottom. It's like we have our own camera. Okay, so we as the developers are able to take a look on the entire level in here by just right clicking and looking around. Okay, so we can even examine the skybox that we have here. There's the sun up there. Okay, there are these two icons in here. And while we are in this mode, we can press the W, A, S, and D keys to navigate around, okay, which is great. If you have ever used first-person shooter games, if you have ever played them, then this should be familiar to you, okay? You just change where you're looking and press the W, A, S, D keys to strafe around. And you can even use Q and E to move down and up. And with these controls, we can reach pretty much anywhere in this scene. So if you're building a city, for example, this is going to be very useful. Okay, so you're going to go to places where the player is going to be. So you're going to see if the, the lighting seems okay, if the models, they have the right size. And if you have to reposition something, you can just use this window. Okay, it's very, very useful. And it's interesting to practice movement in this scene. Okay, just so you get used to the controls and you can work faster. Okay, so the things that we have in the hierarchy are also here in the scene. If you click on the main camera, you notice that some arrows appear in the main camera. And if you click on the directional light, you're going to see that the directional light is selected. But we're going to see more details on this soon enough. Okay, so remember, I told you there, this is a camera. Okay, we have a developer camera in here. But to be true, to be honest, there are two cameras in the scene. Okay, there's the one for the developer, which the player is not going to see, only us, when we are making the games, are able to see. But we also have another camera in here. Okay, you're going to see that there's this little icon for the camera. This is the main camera. And notice that this project that we made already added a camera to this scene. And it did this because this is what the players are going to, to use so they're able to see things. Okay, this camera here is going to render the game for the player. It's going to draw the game for the player. So they are able to see, well, basically the entire game. So we have this camera here. If you take a close look, you're going to see that there's a little rectangle in front of it. Okay, that's uh, the view from some. It's like the area that is used for the camera to, to, to look at places. And there are these little rectangles in here that are the, these lines in here that are going to kind of show the range where, that the camera is reaching and it's going to draw. And while you have this camera selected, you can see that there's a, a little box in the bottom right of the scene window. This is the camera preview. 
okay and this is basically what the players are going to see this is the actual real deal okay you can see a quick preview of the game here but if you want to see more details you can just go to the game window right now we can only see the horizon we can see the the blue sky and a, a ground in here but once we develop the game and add some 3d elements and add uh, actual movement logic we're going to see the actual game running here okay and okay so at the right portion of the editor there is the inspector window okay so what is this about what does this window do it shows details of whatever we have selected it can be a game object that is in our scene or it can be a file that is in our project. Let's check a game object first. If we click on the main camera and we look at the inspector window, you notice that it's now filled with lots of details in here. Okay. At the top, you're going to see the name of the game object. Okay. So remember before everything, this is a, is a game object that is called main camera. We have a tag that pretty much, it's like a text, it's like a little label that is telling that this is a main camera, okay, but it depends on the usage. Sometimes we don't use tags, sometimes we use tags, it depends on the game. You're going to see throughout this course that we are going to use this, these from time to time. We have layers, so we can use these to, to check for collisions, but it's not used for the camera. And if you look below these items that we're looking right now, there's going to be a list of other items. Okay, so we have transform, camera, GUI layer, flare layer, and audio listener. These items they are called components. Okay, and this is very important. Okay, game object is something that is very important. It's the base entity for the game. But components are also essential for making a game because they are what change uh, how game objects behave. Okay, so if we make a, an empty game object that just says main camera, well, that's not enough. We need to specifically tell Unity that we want this camera to behave like a camera. And that's why we have a camera component. Okay, this one. And we also have a transform component. Let's take a look on th this one first. Okay, this is the most basic component for every game object you can imagine because it deals with the position the rotation and the scale of whatever game object you have. Okay, this is very basic for positioning in Unity. And you're going to see uh, more about this shortly. Okay. We also have a camera component. And this component is going to show us details about the camera. So for example, right now the clear flags for the camera is skybox. Okay, so it renders like this. But if we wanted to use a, a flat color, we can just click on skybox and select solid color. So it becomes entirely blue. And if you want to change the color of the solid color, you can just click on this blue rectangle and use the color picker to choose whatever color you want. Okay, but uh, that's not what we're going to do here. But you see, a lot about Unity is experimenting. We can just get here and change some values and see the immediate effect in the game. Okay, sometimes we don't even have to recompile the code if we're writing some code. Okay, it's not necessary at all because we can just change these things and through script, Unity is going to process these changes and then uh, change how the game is looking like. Okay, you can even change the field of view of the camera, so it's going to, to have a, a small rectangle or a large one. Okay, but in general, we don't have to change the default values for the camera. But still, it's good to know that these things are here. And for the directional light, we're going to see other things. We also have a transform component, but we this time have a light component. So this light works as a directional light, but we can change them to spotlight or point light or area light later if we want. Okay, we can change the light's color, we can change the intensity, how the shadows are going to be rendered. So these are better seen once you have some 3D elements in the game and you can see how the, the shading is working for them. Okay, and we also, in the bottom of the Unity Editor, we have a project window. This window contains the Assets folder, which is very important because this is going to contain all the files that are going to be used to make the game to happen. Okay, So any 3D models that we're going to use, any scripts that we create, any materials and animations and sound and video, every file that you can imagine that can be used for making this game to work well is going to be in the Assets folder. Okay, that's why we have this one here. And another window that is very important and is the console window. If this isn't enabled here, you can just go to window and you can press, you can go to console and press this button. So if you're a developer, you should be familiar with this, but if you have never seen that, this window is basically used for showing messages to the player. 
Okay, and there are three kinds of messages that we can see here. We have error messages which are uh, colored in red. We have warning messages which are yellow, and we have basic information messages which are white or black. Okay, and the error messages are, as the name suggests, when you make any mistakes in your code, or maybe uh, some plugin is not working right. Well, it's kind of the, the the biggest message that Unity can show you to tell that something is wrong. Okay, so you're going to see an error. You have warnings when you uh, there are some suggestions to improve your code or there's something that is not optimized and you can change that. And the log messages, the informational messages, are basically to show information for the, for you as a developer. Okay, you can even make your own messages in here so you can see what's happening in the game to see if it's behaving uh, correctly or if you're going to see some errors while you're developing the game well you can use these informational messages to see what's happening uh, behind the scenes okay so that's pretty much it for the unity editor okay we have uh, we have seen the hierarchy window that lists items the, the game objects in the game we have the scene window that we have we can navigate in here and see everything that we have uh, we have the game window that shows what's going to be rendered for the player. Inspector that shows details, so we see the name of the game object, some components. We have the project window with the assets folder for the files. And we also have console. And this is pretty much it for the Unity Editor. In the next lesson, let's take a look, uh, a, a deeper look on positioning of elements. As we saw in the previous lesson, there's a component there is nearly in all game objects of Unity, and that component is called Transform. So there are three things we can deal with with the Transform. We can deal with Position, Rotation, and also Scale. So let's take a look on here. Notice that if you select a camera, let's also double click and, and zoom with the mouse wheel to, to check uh, the main camera closer. Uh, we, if we change any of these values that we see here on X, Y, and Z, the, this icon is going to move. You can change the value on X by either just typing a number in here, like 1, or 2, or 3, and the camera is going to slowly move, or you can also click on the label X, or Y, or Z, and move the camera around. Okay, so what is this telling us? Notice that when we use X, we are moving the camera, so we are moving this game object in one degree of freedom, in one axis. And this axis is called the horizontal axis, which is this red arrow here. You can even click on this arrow and move the camera around so you can fine-tune the position for this camera. Okay, And this is very good for visual editing. So if you have buildings, if you have cars, if you have some trees in this game, you can just use this arrow to move the camera horizontally. Okay. And if you notice here at this, this gizmo in the top right of the scene window, there's a little hint that this is the X axis, the horizontal one. So it's the red arrow. Okay. Now, if we go to Y and change that, you notice that the camera is moving up and down. This is the vertical axis. Okay. So right now we've tested two degrees of freedom, the horizontal and the vertical axis, which is basically allowing us to uh, put the camera in a 2D environment. However, for 3D elements, for 3D games, we have a third degree, okay? That's why it's 3D, we have three dimensions. And this third degree is the Z axis, which is the depth axis, okay? Sometimes, in other engines, this Z and Y are swapped, okay? So Z would be the vertical axis and Y would be the depth axis. But for Unity, X and Y are horizontal and vertical, and Z is the actual one that gives depth, okay? Which I personally think is better. It makes more sense, okay? So Z is used for moving in this axis of freedom here, and it is the blue arrow, okay? And, well, with these three numbers, we can position this game object in whatever we want. Now, what if we want to deal with two axes at the same time? Okay, we can see that there, these arrows that we see here in the scene window can be clicked and dragged. Okay, so we can move on X, Y, X, Z, and Y. But if you look closer here, there are three um, cubes in this camera. Okay, if you click on the green camera, if you, if you click, click on the green cube, you can move the camera in the X, Z plane. 
okay so horizontal and depth this color here is directly opposite to the axis that uh, well it's coming out of it okay so if you use this green one you, you move on blue and red if you use the red cube you move on green and blue and if you use the blue cube you move on green and red so this is very good for positioning things in a plane so imagine we had a plane in here and we had a, a building for example and we had to reposition that building instead of trying to manually selecting these numbers we can just click on the green cube and position this building uh, around the scene for example we're going to, to practice this shortly okay so this is pretty much it for position we also have rotation and it works more or less the same way we have three degrees of movement here x y and z and well if we change x notice that we're using the camera to look up or down and you can immediately see how this rotation is changing by looking at these gray lines that come out of the camera or by looking at the camera preview okay you can use both to see how this is impacting if we use y we make the camera rotate in the vertical axis okay so we are able to look to the left or to the right for example like this okay and if we go to z it's going to make the camera rotate sideways okay so you can well it's like you're tilting your head to the left or to the right but there's another way to change the rotation okay so right now we have these arrows that change the position however if you go to the top left of unity there are a few tools available for you here okay so the second one that is pre-selected by the phone is the moving tool okay so we can well do all this movement the first one is basically for moving our developer camera okay so we can look at other places but well if we use the right mouse button we can just navigate around much better but still it's good to know that this exists now if we click on the third camera uh, notice that the tools around the, this uh, main camera are different okay so we have a red circle a green circle and a blue circle and if we click and drag them around well we can rotate the camera on all of these three axes and it works the same way red is for X green is for Y and blue is for Z okay so you can just click and move around so we're able to find to the camera to look to whatever position we want okay in whatever manner we want and if you click on this sphere around the camera you're able to to freely rotate this but in general it's not very uh, useful it's a bit difficult to to rotate the camera like this it's better to just select some degrees and uh, well calmly choose the better values that you want okay and the third element is the scale okay so scale is basically changing the size of things we have x y and z however if we change the scale in the camera x y and z notice that absolutely nothing seems to happen okay the scale is not changing the camera is not getting any bigger you have to remember that this camera that we see here this little icon is well it's not inside the game this is this just a, a representation a tip uh, that help us to click on the camera and select the camera and know where the camera is same goes for light but they are abstract okay they are not a 3d model they're not an actual camera model that a player is going to see that there's a camera following them that's not how it works okay so to deal with scale we have to deal with a 3d element okay so how do we make a 3d element we need to make what we call a 3D primitive. If we want complex 3D elements, it's better to design them in other tools like uh, 3D Max, Maya, or Blender, and then you import to Unity because Unity is not a 3D modeling and texturing tool. Okay, it's a game making tool. But sometimes we can use some primitive shapes to well, we can prototype the game without without needing to to have the final art which is good so if you prototype your entire game with simple shapes like cubes uh, spheres cylinders and cones uh, you're able to, to to do two things you can program your game so you're not waiting on anything to be ready and you can also adjust the game design of your game so you can uh, find the difficulty that you want okay you can find the experience that you want to pass to the players so how do we make a 3d element if you go to our hierarchy and then we right click here you're going to see there is a new menu so we have copy paste duplicate delete but down here we have several other options we can create some nice game objects in here we can create an empty game object which is going to be well it's just going to have a transform component okay so let's go ahead if you click on create empty there's going to be game object 
and it just contains transform. That's not what we want. Now, if you take a look, there are some other menus here. We have 2D, 3D object, 2D object, light, audio, UI, particle system, and camera. We're going to 3D object, and you're going to see that there are some familiar names in here. We have cube, sphere, capsule, cylinder, and we also have plane. Okay. To start, let's click on cube. Okay, which is the most basic shape. So we have a cube element in the hierarchy. Okay, we have the cube game object. And if you go to the inspector, you notice that there are lots of components in this cube. Let's take a look at them one by one. Okay. So first of all, the one that we are basically, this is basically everything we're talking about in this lesson, is the transform component. So we have the position, and it's set to an odd, uh, odd number. If we want to move this cube to the center of the scene, we can just change x to 0, y to 0, and z to 0. So the cube is right here. Okay. This is the origin of our scene. It's the middle of our scene. And we also, well, just like the camera, we have rotation. If we change rotation on x, the cube flips to these sides, okay? And we also have scale, and this is where scale is going to, to make things uh, interesting. If we change scale on X, the cube is going to increase its size in the horizontal axis, okay? So we can use a, a large number for X to make it bigger, or we can use a small number, even a smaller than one, to make it look shorter like this. We could even use a negative number to flip it horizontally, but, well, there's no difference for this cube. We can do the same thing vertically to make the cube taller or shorter and in the depth axis as well. Okay, So we can use all of these three degrees, three axes, three dimensions to change the scale and then change the size of the cube. But if we want to do this visually, we can use a tool for that. We can just go to this resizing tool. And you notice that if we are in the moving tool, we have some arrows. But if you go to this scaling tool, you're going to see some cubes, okay? Which is a little tip that it means we're going to resize whatever we have selected. We're going to change the scale. If you use red, it changes horizontally, green vertically, and blue in the depth axis. And if you use this middle cube here, and this is very good, you can scale on three axes at the same time. And this is very good to keep proportion, okay? So if we made a, a cube like this one, for example, and we want to keep the proportion between the scale, okay, all of these properties here, we can just use this blue uh, cube and we're going to change them, uh, to change everything properly, okay? It's like, remember when you used to, to, to draw in paint, for example, and you just uh, resized an image, but you made the image look a bit flat, okay, a bit weird? Uh, that's pretty much... Uh, the solution to that, okay? If you if you work on three degrees at the same time for scaling, you are going to preserve proportion, which is going to make the game look uh, prettier that way, okay? And this cube game object contains several components inside it. So we have the cube mesh filter, okay? So this is basically the data for the 3D object that is being rendered here, 3D mesh. We have a box collider, which is used for basically processing collisions, so if we activate physics later, uh, this is going to be used. And we also have a mesh render. Okay, now this component is very important, because notice that if we disable it, the cube is completely invisible now. But if we keep it enabled, well, we can see the cube again. Okay, so this basically draws the cube. Let's talk about this in more details in the next lesson.